This is a 19-year-old male who presented with a chief complaint of diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, non-germinal center type, and question of autologous stem cell rescue after six cycles of RCHOP. I saw him after four cycles, and he's from out of the country. Two years prior to diagnosis, he had fullness under the right arm. He then developed fevers, night sweats, and an 18-kilogram weight loss. He had three core needle biopsies performed on May 28th, which revealed the LBCL. He had a right axillary biopsy, a true cut, on July 6th of 2018, and that was called diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, non-germinal center type. The KI-67 was 80 to 90 percent. A PET scan was performed, which we will see. He was called stage 4B disease. His ejection <coughs> fraction was normal. The LDH was elevated. He's treated with four cycles of uh, RCHOP, uh, uh, I'm sorry, th three cycles of RCHOP and, and with methotrexate and then a fourth cycle. I evaluated him on October 22nd of 2018. Interestingly, he had a quantitative GCSPD level, which was low. His social history was non-contributory. His exam was unremarkable. He had a little bit of neutropenia, which delayed uh, his, third, his fifth cycle of treatment. When I saw him, the LDH was 298 prior to the fifth cycle. And could we see the radiology, please? This is the uh, FTG PET scan from uh, uh, July 1st of 2018. This was prior to the uh, uh, treatment and the stage in the workup there. You can see a lot of uh, uh, disease uh, pretty much everywhere in the uh, uh, body. Uh, a cross-section of the gene, uh, this large uh, right axillary mass, had a, a SUV of 19.5 uh, and measured uh, maximum diameter 11 centimeter by 5 centimeter by 10 centimeter, so quite large mass. You also here in the abdomen, you see the involvement of the spleen, uh, mesentery throughout the uh, uh, upper abdomen, and then down in this right uh, iliac, uh, you can see uh, a lot of involvement there as well. And then in the uh, uh, left acetabulum, you can see just uh, internally there also involvement. So pretty much throughout the body, high SUV, large masses. Let me show the follow-up then. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's important. So, so there's a uh, scan done on the uh, four, uh, 4th of uh, October. And... Uh, the patient had quite a, a good uh, response. See down here in that uh, large right axillary mass, uh, just a teeny bit of, uh, of FTG uptake in the, the mass, but the mass is much smaller. Uh, abdomen, you, you can see the spleen looks quite quite good, slightly uh, enlarged still, but uh, that uh, hypermetabolic mass is really the gone, and you can see down here in the uh, uh, right iliac looks uh, quite normal. Nothing in the acetabulum there. So um, the SUV of that uh, left uh, or that right axilla was uh, 1.8, so it was uh, felt to be a, a Deval 2, still slightly uh, uh, increased uptake still in that right uh, axilla, but a, a very good uh, response. Okay, now the pathology, please. Yes. We received a biopsy uh, from the outside. Uh, you can see it's basically a couple cores of uh, blue cellular infiltrate, a lot of pale background, go on higher power. Click. Thanks. Thanks. See that compared to the background lymphocytes, most of these neoplastic cells are very large, uh, very large nuclei, uh, vacuolization within the nuclei, and they have a lot of pale cytoplasm. Number of stains and ancillary tests were performed and showing those um, high grade B cell lymphoma, double expressor non germinal center B, non germinal center phenotype with both MYC and B cell 6 rearrangements. So the pathology changed here, and um, the question is, what do we do? And I'm, his father, I told him we'd bring it to our tumor board to discuss the case. Uh, 
So in the whole uh, scheme of things, the taxonomy 21 are aggressive, and this one fits in the high-grade B-cell, as noted on the right. Um, the, uh, as far as looking at the double-triple hit lymphomas, the early reported median survival rates are 4 and a half to 34 months, and subsequent studies reported 11 to 13 months. Uh, we, interestingly, in a paper that Ann Novak did on looking at failure to achieve EFS 24 with our CHOP alone, we had patients who uh, achieved uh, uh, in these red uh, bars, uh, uh, some, of most, uh, some of those got our CHOP, in fact, most of them did. Uh, and when we uh, looked at the outcomes of our 71 patients, uh, he would be, he's younger, <coughs> younger than the 29 to 82 years old, but uh, this was the event-free and the overall survival uh, in our series. And interestingly, uh, all 13 of the MIC BCL6 cases were de novo. Uh, we've reported that the transformation has a different outcome. They're equally likely to be GCB or non-GCB. This was non-GCB as opposed to the MIC BCL2, which are, G which are uh, uh, GCB. And interestingly, these, this group of patients showed a non-significant tendency to better outcomes. Uh, the p-value is 0.16. The numbers are extremely small. As you can appreciate, if in those patients who had no BCL2 rearrangement are represented in the blue line here, um, the uh, what's just uh, uh, to uh, just, we pointed this out uh, previously at a meeting, but this is uh, the work of Margaret Schiff's uh, lab and Bjorn Chopin, uh, uh looking at 304 patients. And just to put it, uh, just to remind us all that uh, uh, looking at things, the BCL2 and MIC deregulation suggests the current definitions of double and triple hit large cells are insufficiently precise. Uh, looking at the role of transplant, uh, there were three papers who have stated that this doesn't matter, and there are two papers that say that it might be better if you transplanted patients. And again, we wouldn't know in any of these papers whether they were BCL2 or BCL6 along with MIC. And so the question is, we have an individual who was treated with uh, essentially Mr. Chop, and the question is, uh, uh, what should we do? How many cycles he received again? He just received his fifth cycle this week. He had four cycle. He had four cycles to get to the negative pet. So I think you have a couple of variables here. As you pointed out, this is not a transform uh, double head lymphoma. It actually is the normal, uh, which is typically is associated with better prognosis. Uh, in addition, the BCL6 translocation does not have the same negative impact factor as BCL2, and there's emerging evidence, which you have partially shown as well, in this setting. Uh, we have evidence that those patients do reasonably well with our drug treatment. Uh, you're already almost completed with this treatment, so I'll basically continue this treatment. Um, the only other, you know, Trexid prophylaxis was probably uh, uh, you know, uh, okay, considering that the APC phenotype at the initial presentation. The only question with this, uh, some residual uptake persistent in axla, this was a site of the bulky disease, based on recent British Columbia uh, cancer agency data, you know, you can consider consolidated radiation uh, to the uh, area of involved uh, field uh, radiation to this area. Would you transplant it? I would not. I don't, I don't think the transplant consolidation uh, so far, and there's obviously no randomized studies, but data from several observational studies do not necessarily show uh, improvement in the outcome of those patients with the transplant consolidation. Steve, would you try and explain? I think that's complicated because the problem is the field has moved all the time. So the data we keep looking to is, is difficult to interpret. So there are a number of trials that did not show a benefit for transplant, but there have been some studies, some that made the New England Journal that showed <clears throat> if this was large cell lymphoma, high risk disease, high LDH, stage four, um, a lot of other symptoms up front, that's a case to be made for doing an autologous transplant. We didn't know that he was really a high grade lymphoma at the beginning. We might not have chosen our chops. So now that we chose our chop and we got a remission, 
should you do more to try and consolidate it in a 19 year old so I think it's a complicated conversation I don't know that there's a right answer that's why I was asking Greg what he thought but uh, I might be a little more tempted to consider an autologous transplant as consolidation in this guy. Okay. Um, Dr. Nawakaski, so if you have known that he was BCL, making BCL6 rearranged in the beginning, would you have gone with Archa or would you have gone with Goibaxamayo? Oh, now you put me in a really tough spot. <laughs> uh, I think I probably would still favor more intensive regimen to begin with. Uh, so, I mean, he's he's got a very go. standard treatment for a not so standard disease. So the disease is kind of nasty looking. Although he's done well, the question is, have you given him enough? And maybe you're lucky, maybe you have, but there's an equal possibility. <coughs> we got standard, but he got a little more than standard because he got methotrexate. Yeah, but you know, we would have done yeah. it for any kind of high risk patient. In the old days, we would have given intrathecal. Now we just give, I just see that as prophylaxing his CSF. Yeah. But that's where a lot, that there's a key relapse <coughs> element to the double, triple hits. There. But this guy had a lot of disease. I'm really concerned yeah. he's going to relapse outside of his CSF. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll refer him then to one of the trans to the transplant team for another opinion also. Uh, I think this is other comments or thoughts, Nora? Yeah, I would treat with consolidation, high-dose chemotherapy and stem cell transplant. He's 19, he deserves our best shots. And we don't want to miss our window of opportunity and maybe even consider radiation, consolidation radiation to the right maximum. Dr. Hewitt Gordon says Yeah. Gordon, any comments? I, I think in this case, with his age and everything, um, what I could get, yeah, I, would, I would still consider transplants, uh, although I'm not a transplant person per se, but I think in this case, uh, that's, a, that's a, I think, good option. Okay. Any other comments? I really, again, appreciate all the turnout, all the comments. Uh, the slides are gorgeous, as were the images, uh, so it's really a very dynamic conference. We will have our poster at ASH uh, reporting that uh, we've changed things. In 56% of the cases, we've changed something. So I think this is really a worthwhile effort. So thanks again.